Uh, welcome everybody. If you see the screen, just type one for me, then I know that you look at this 30 days of uh, Python class and objects. Great. I think everybody see my uh, screen and that's great. And today we will learn classes and objects. Uh, so let's create a, a new folder here and let's call it a week uh, five and uh, let's have objects and OOP, OOP, object oriented programming. And let's have another file, OOP, whatever, OOP.py. Okay, great. Um, is the Python object oriented programming language? And the answer is actually yes. Yeah, the answer is going to be yes. You can write Python as a functional uh, programming or object oriented programming. So it's up to your decision, but it's not like Java or C Sharp that restrict you to write your code in an object-oriented fashion. So it's up to you to decide whether to write a functional or object-oriented programming. Yes. So how does object looks like when it comes to Python? Of course, everybody knows when we declare a function in Python, we say, for instance, make a square. So we have to have the def keyword and the name of the function followed by the parentheses. The parentheses may have a parameter, parameter one, parameter two, or it may not have, it depends. For instance, now this make square may take one, I mean one parameter and it may return a value and so it just make every number to its square, right? Yeah, I think this could be very familiar to everyone. How about if I write multiply numbers, multiply nums, uh, maybe it takes any number, A, B, C, and then it may return also the multiplication of the numbers. So easy, right? Yes. Yeah, so now, I believe that you know how to declare a function and how to also give different uh, parameters. And maybe I can also call you how to, I mean, show you how to call a function. Let's call uh, the first one, make square. Make square has actually, or taking one parameter. So we have to pass one argument and I'm expecting four from this. As you can see, it's four, great. And print uh, multiply nums. For instance, if I say two, three, four. So that means multiplying all these numbers together and three by, two by three, six, six by uh, four, 24. So let's see the result. Oh yeah, 24. So this is declaring, declaring of a function, declaring of a function and calling of a function. It has, uh, parameters and it should have also argument. If it's one, we pass one. If it's three, we pass three. Yeah, that's all about functions. And by now you should be very familiar with how to declare a function, how to give different parameters and how to also pass the different arguments of the function. Great, now let's come to uh, Maybe I can put this uh, function revision. Maybe if, in case if you want this code, I can just function uh, revision py, and then I can just put it there. Where is it? Yeah. Now let's move on to this. The op. Uh, we don't need it here anymore, object-oriented programming. First, we have to declare a class. 
Oh, what is a class? Class is actually a kind of a blueprint for an object, or it's a kind of a form, you know, guys, or maybe a, tem a template. Whenever you go to some uh, a public office, they just already prepare some kind of a form and you fill your form, right? And if you go for exam, uh, the instructor prepare exam for every student that do. The, so you have to first write your first name, last name and student ID and all the questions will remain the same for everybody. So it's a kind of the same template. Every exam paper uh, do have the same kind of structure. And we call that actually a template or a kind of a blueprint. Yeah. So class is actually like that. It's just a blueprint. Yeah. So how do we create a class? If I say dog, and then this is actually how you declare and then pass. Now I don't like to write anything here. I call it just pass. And now actually we have created our dog. Really? Let's see uh, the dog uh, class. And now let's see uh, dog by printing just dog. Oh yeah, the just as you can see, the name of the class is dog. Does it have anything? How about if I just declare something outside? Uh, I call it, uh, this a fluffy uh, dog, uh, fluffy dog, the name of the dog. And let's see, can I access that value? Let me try, print a, a dog dot name. Okay, great. Yeah, actually I managed to access this value. Oh yeah. Uh, can we declare a function? Maybe let's see def uh, and then uh, I can say sample function and then uh, whatever, return, this is a sample function. Okay, now let's see, print and dog dot sample function. And let me invoke that because I have to go to the dog object and then invoke that sample function. Oh yeah, I managed to access that everywhere. Okay, that's great. Uh, as you can see, this function is available just globally to the dog, but most of the time it's not like this, how we write properly a function. Uh, I mean, uh, so it's, it, we write it differently and it goes like this. First, we need def this function, this the init, the init and self, but I just want to write it differently. Uh, so as you can see, this is a constructor function. The way you write it, maybe I have to show you again, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, and this. Then you have to have something like this. And here usually we say self, really? Yeah, self. What is this self? Let me show you by printing the self. Print self. The self, if you guys come from other programming language, self here means this, this doc, this class. Okay. Now, since we are printing this self, let's see, uh, print uh, doc. Just the doc, printing the doc might type has no attribute name. Yeah, now we don't have these names and whatsoever. Yeah, so actually it didn't show anything, but how about they just, let me just invoke this. The self, well, because we didn't pass it, so it's really a bit hard to show you here. But anyway, this self is a way to bind the data here. Wow, what does that bind mean? Let me say, for instance, let me say name here, okay? If you say name here, uh, I can say name, no, self, name is equal to name. What I am trying to do, I am 
binding this name to the dog, then it will be actually a template or a blueprint for every dog. So now how do I call the dog? Then I have to create a dog object like this, dog. Then I have to just pass the name Fluffy and uh, Fluffy dog over here. Then I can say, if I print dog, let's see what we get. Yeah, of course you get some kind of an object to get the value. For instance, if I say a name, yeah, a Fluffy. As you can see, I got the fluffy. How about the age of this dog? Let's see, maybe let's make the age uh, and maybe a country of whatever. Uh, then let's say self and age could be eight years and self country maybe where could be anywhere. Yes, from uh, Greece, yeah. Okay, so now this is actually a kind of a class that allows us to create an object. So I have to pass the, by the way, now when I am just making here, I made a mistake. I have to just attach or bind the country, so country. And now I have to give it, um, age age the age would be for instance and i had also a problem here it should be just age so the thing is actually self dot name and just you bind it with the same name as you can see name to name age to age country to country but here we give a value for instance the age is going to be eight for this dog and the country is going to be Okay, Greece. Yeah, so now we can have print the dog age and print the dog country. Now let's see. Yeah, as you can. Okay, now using this, the same uh, dog, we can create another dog actually. Now let me just change this to. Uh, D1, and then we have to create another dog, maybe D2, and I will show you just uh, in just Husky or whatever, and this is going to be just uh, 10 years, and I don't know where this is uh, coming from, let's just call it uh, Finland, and, and just let's just change this to D2, okay? This is too much for a dog, right? Okay, now if you see, yeah, so now this blueprint allow us to create different uh, dogs, yeah? Different dog objects. Uh, maybe whenever we say this, the Object, object usually have these properties, you know? What's these properties? Maybe most of the time people make car so easy. Let's imagine our class is a car, uh, maybe a car. Usually we say, Dev, I can show you again. Uh, maybe I can just use, a uh, car usually do have this uh, model, okay? The model and manufacturer or a brand and also what is the gearbox, uh, if it's a manual or automatic or a color, different parameters or attributes or properties that can describe the car. So actually, we use these properties then later to create an uh, object. So we use this first to create the blueprint. So how do we append, I mean, uh, bind this? You have to say self.model 
and then to the map. And then self.run to the red. Self gearbox to the gearbox. And then self dot color to the yeah, so now we created a car object. So now maybe we can create Toyota or different. Then we can say Toyota, maybe then we can say car. And then what's the model or the make? It could be, uh, I mean, the model could be 2021. And the brand Toyota. Mm, or whatever, uh, maybe gearbox. Let's make it automatic. And the color blue black. Should we just fill all these properties in the object? So now, if we print this Toyota, and we will have, of course, you don't see this the, the car. So we have to just take out each value using uh, maybe the brand or maybe uh, the model. Yeah, for instance, let's start from the model and I should get 2021. So this is actually how you create a simple class. This is, we call this declaring a class or creating a class and this is the class name. And this is instantiating the class to create an object. So this is an object and these are the properties. Model, these are, are attributes or fields or properties. Yeah, great. Is it so far clear guys? Yeah, so is it clear? And so what is uh, what by now you should know how to declare a class yeah to declare a class this is what you should do class and name of class and this also it's a camel case but it should start with uppercase and this is how it goes if you write something like this that means you write your first class but you know it doesn't have anything so def we need the constructor, the init. And this actually, now this the constructor allow us to pass the different properties of that. It could be a name, it could be a gender, it could be any property here, uh, maybe country. And then this property should be bind to this class using the self self dot name is equal to the name and oh sorry self gender to gender and self dot country the country now we're binding these properties to the class. So we are creating actually a blueprint. So this is the constructor. So let's, um, then how do you, yeah. Then you can say object, and name of the class, name of the class we've created over here. And now we can say the name is John and the gender is male and the country is uh, from UK or yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, so we have created now one person based on this, uh, uh, this uh, blueprint or this class. I think I can keep this code and then I can just call it uh, declaring class, declaring class dot py and now let's go further maybe um let's now call 
I mean, let's now create a class name person. Okay. Yes. Let's call this. Yeah. Let me show you. Print person. Please make print your best friend and it will teach you much better. Okay, now if I do this, yes, the name of this class is actually person. Okay, now let's use the constructor function, def, and then underscore, and uh, init underscore self. Yes, now if I just have nothing and the console, uh, no, print, print uh, something here. Let's do that. It, it's, it's really hard to get that. Maybe let's just create this an object because now there is no way to get the value from here, but let's in, instantiate this to let's create a person P and person. Yeah, and of course you have to invoke it like that. And now let's print a person P. Oh yeah, something here. Yeah, something, I mean, something from the constructor. Even though we didn't call the constructor, actually, the constructor has been invoked. That's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We don't have, as you can see, we have just the name and the constructor function inside the constructor function. We have this. And then we just invoked it and we got it. So the constructor function actually will be invoked by itself. You don't have to invoke it. Great. I think you have noticed that. Okay, how about we if we have name and I don't like to bind this to the to the class. And uh, if I don't bind it, and if I run, uh, it says actually name. Yeah, it's missing one required positional argument. Let's just pass that maybe for instance, John. Yeah, it's going well but it's not actually bind to this. Do you think I can get it by just print p dot name? Yeah, no, as you can see, it hasn't been bind to this and person object has no attribute name. So now let's bind it self and the name and the name. Now this should work because it will be binded. That's why we, oh yeah, John is now, is an attribute or a property for this person class. Great. After this, I think you know what this name, or I mean this self.name means age, gender. Maybe we can leave the gender later, country. Yeah. Yes, this is very good. So self name and then self.age, age, self dot country and then country and then i think this doesn't look like self and we don't need this printing also now i think we have seen this many times now let's pass h25 maybe for uk you know how to declare a class and you know how to create an object from a class and you know how to get the value based on the attributes. This is okay for you. Now let's go for creating a method, okay? Def, I can say gate person info. And then I should self, and then we don't need anything else because we want to get the person info. You can say, for instance, return, this dot, not this, sorry guys, self, self dot name. Uh, for instance, it's better if we have also here first name, first name, last name would be good. And we have to, 
first name dot dot last name great and now as you can see we can say when i say solve means actually this person dot last name uh, but now if i try to get here because we don't have name any let's try to get the person info i think it doesn't say info let's change it to o and i have to change it here also oh, you can call it whatever but just uh now let me run this as it uh, country missing one required because uh this needs to, to be john doe and we have to have because if you have four arguments you have to have also four attributes here now it's working john doe but you know you need space in between right yes you need space in between and now let's put it like this great yeah john doe now i get the person's full name yeah you can write it more using for instance we can use this the string interpolation uh, like i i love this so i can say uh like this i am i think by now you know how to inject the data like this right and i am from self dot country as you can see now if we just write i am john doe i'm from uk that's great or maybe i can say he is and he is from and he is <laughs> okay whatever and then myself dot h as you can see he is john doe he is from uk he is 25. yeah now as you can see this is very good now how about if we want to mm, create another method or something we can create but yeah this is already good enough and uh, of course in the example over here there might be quite a lot of uh, examples that i have created and this is uh, for self let me see if i just uh this one what it says is actually we can even pass for instance a default parameter uh, for instance a sub last name is actually itai uh, and age everybody knows uh, 150 and then a country actually finland this means if you if i don't i mean if i don't pass the value like person two if i don't pass value here any value that means the default property will be used so now print uh, peter.get full name yeah. peter.get uh, info person info sorry and i should get my full name oh yeah he's a sabitai he's from finland he is 250 years old yes let's just great So uh, we can also pass a default properties, uh, default uh, values. Yeah, that's what I tried to demonstrate here. Methods to modify class default values. Um, I want to show this, uh, okay.
No, uh, yeah, I can, I can actually have some object here. For instance, let's have this self dot um, skills. And then how about instead of here, uh, like skills, let's imagine that we don't want to get the skills as in a property, yeah, but it's by default a value, okay, but it's empty, it doesn't have. Now let's see person one or person two skill, print p2 dot skills. I'm expecting empty or just empty list. Oh yeah, so then we need actually a method to add skills, def add skill, and it should have self, and we have to have the skill, and then we should say self dot skills dot append every now and then skill. As you can see, it's so beautiful, right? As you can see, you access this skill, and then this skill has to be coming from the user. Now, uh, for instance, p2 dot add skill, let's give him HTML. And now again, let's access the person skill if he has already. Oh yeah, he's having some skill. Okay, now let's try to add more skills and see if he has already skills. I can just change this to CSS and this JS and this React and this Python. And then if we do now, as you can see, uh, yeah, this person got actually this skills. Yeah, even we can say uh, we can get skills instead of just uh, let's use def get skills. Oh, and we don't need any other. So we can return, return actually uh, self.skills. And if, even we can use the join, by the way, guys. Do you remember how the join works? You have to have dot, something like this, and then join, and then you have to pass the, the list, right? And then if you have just like this, nothing, it will be uh, connected, no space in between the, the words. Uh, now let's make use of print rp2 get skills and i have to invoke that right yeah this is not beautiful right but did i tell you that this join can be used all for instance like this and now i can see html css javascript react and python but how about if i ask you hey i want you to write this html css javascript react and python Okay, maybe I will leave this for you, or maybe you can think about this during the break, or if you want me to do it also, I can do it later. Okay, great. Now I think you guys are very familiar uh, with how to declare a class and then how to create the constructor. And these are properties of the class, and these are methods. And inside the method also, as you can see, we need the self, the self. If we need an input from the user, as you can see, we have to have additional parameter. And now as you can see, I'm adding. But if we don't, we just self, for instance, here self, because I don't need, I want to get. Yeah, actually it's a get. Whenever we try to get something from the class or from the object, we don't have to have additional parameter. But if we are adding, actually, we have to have the, as a parameter, the value that we are going to add, yeah? So that is it. After the break, what are we going to learn in inheritance?
or actually creating a child. And creating a child is gonna be so easy using my thing. Yeah, let's have 15 minutes break. Welcome back. In this session, we will talk about inheritance. Yeah, who doesn't love inheritance? I mean, or inheriting something. Guys, have you ever inherited something? Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, you might have inherited uh, already some properties from, uh, uh, from family members or ancestors, and you might also inherit uh, your appearance yeah the hair color uh the eye color the skin color and everything you inherit actually from your parents and that's inheritance so everybody inherits something yeah at least uh, genetically right but here in python actually we inherit uh properties and methods yeah so this person class has actually this constructor and there are some properties and we have these three methods and now let's create a child and as i told as, as i told you making a child is so easy here in python you just say uh class and then the name of the child and let's call it uh maybe student yeah and this then here inside you can just pass the parent that we want to inherit and then let's just pass yeah now we just created actually the child class this is a child because it is inheriting from the person let's uh student and now let's instantiate student and then if i just call this uh, print s and if i say print dot first name what do you think the value will be i will remind you the tell me Yeah, because when we create a child, it usually inherit everything. Yes, Elena said as a, yeah, that you're right. Because we have this default property. If we don't have default property, it will be uh, an error, but now we have default, default properties. So it should be as a. Yeah, and also if I say, uh, print from s dot get person info and it gets that so as you can see it's just accessing everything everything yeah this doesn't have any code but it's accessing everything what the person has that's called inheritance it just inherits or access everything, all the methods and all the properties. Yeah, that is. But we can again instantiate now def in it. Oh, what? As you can see now, oh, this uh, VS code is so powerful <laughs> because it just knows that I am. Uh, it's just not that I am accessing this. Uh, I mean, this is a child and it created this for me. This means actually, but I don't want to create like this because it, 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 it's hard for you to understand. So I have to just do it manually step by step. If I say underscore, yeah, just if I just press enter, look at what it seems. Yeah, it just created for me everything what I need. Uh, but let's just remove this uh, actually the default because most of the time we don't really pass default. We just 
And if we don't have default, this part of the code will not work. This person, person two will never work. Yeah. So then uh, let's just uh, make everyone to person one. I mean, and just let's just pick two. Yes. And now, also here, I will just show you dev. I will write it manually. And now in this case, init and self and again, pass. Does it work now, this? Now, as I told you, we don't have any default, so it doesn't work. Yeah, as you can see, it's not working, it requires. So let's uh, uh, Marta and uh, maybe I can say, here, Elena, Elena is a very easy name. Okay, and then uh, a last name, uh, it could be uh, Elena. Mm. Okay, Sami, so, okay, then it's going to be the age 21 and Finland. I created one person, one student here, first name, last name, age and country. That's how it looks like, right? Yeah, so let's do it here. Yeah, uh, he's Elena Sami. He is from Finland. He is 21 years old. As you can see, uh, still it works. Still it's, wor it, it's working. Uh, it's accessing, uh, how about if we pass self, uh, no, first name, last name, and what is this uh, age? and the country. How about now if we have additional gender? Because we want our function, this one to be much smarter, you know? This person, Elena, it's a gender, the gender should be actually she. Okay, instead. So now let's give it actually a better get info function. That identify if a person's gender. As you can see, first name, last name, age, country has been used. So we can access by saying super like this, and then dot init. And then first name to first name, last name to last name and uh, what's the other age to the age age to the age country to country and then we have this a new gender but the gender should be actually solved dot gender and then gender i am just attaching this gender to this student because the previous the parent doesn't uh, detect if someone's gender is a uh, uh, male or female or whatsoever okay but I, I don't like to make a mistake of some syntax i have to check uh, maybe as you can see this it doesn't really need, as you can see, I made a mistake here. So we don't have to bind it like this. It's just good enough to uh, list the properties like this. It's good enough. So we don't have to do like this, yeah? So now this, the gender is new. So we have to also rewrite it again. Okay, great. Now, then if we write the same uh, function, def get person info, yeah, even as you can see, it's providing, it's, it's, it's super dot get info is actually now, yeah, it's just providing. But now I want to modify it. If you modify the, the previous, the parent method, we call it overriding and let's make it smarter. Okay, let gender, gender, if self, self dot gender, 
if it's mel, uh, we call that the values if, do you remember this ternary? And I call it let, not gender. Uh, it's going to be he, right? Or the pronoun, actually, we call it pronoun. Uh, Okay, how do I write? Else, actually the value will be here. Else, it could be, what's the value? He or she. Uh, do you remember guys how to write this uh, maybe I think you might forget how to write ternary in short. Uh, for instance, you can say four is greater than two. This, this is going to be if uh, then uh, uh, actually that's going to be true, else it's uh, false, okay? And then let's just store this value here. I can just call it the value because I have to also check it if I am not making mistakes. Print, let's check the value here. Uh, mail what? Okay, let me turn the Python, but do I have a code here maybe? Yeah, I think I have a code here already. I think I wrote it the other way. Yes, I should have written it the first way. So if this should be he in here, uh, then else, let me check the code, else, yeah. Yes, if this is true, the value will be this one, else it will be she, yeah? So the pronoun, and now we are creating a pronoun. Maybe just to, if this, if this value is going to be greater, then we call true value, okay? Else, false, So we can write a very short if condition. Now I'm expecting actually this value, this true value. Uh, what, what, what's happening? Oh, student number has not to be gender. Let me see student. Yeah, because I didn't pass the gender yet here. And then I have to call it uh, for the time being female, okay? Uh, now let's run again. Oh, but six were given. Of take five position argument, but six were given. Let me see, first name, last name. One, two, three, four, five. First name, last name, gender. It's five. Okay, it's okay. Uh, let's just remove that for the time being. Line 37. Okay, then let me check what I have here, for instance. Yes, yes, here it says, what's wrong with me? 
Yes, and let's also first attach this one here to the object. And now let's. Yeah, thank you. Someone suggested uh, because this one didn't have uh, the proper underscore. Now, as you can see, this is working and good. Yeah. So now I think you understand how to use this ternary operator. If you change this to false, uh, this will be the value, false value. Uh, yeah, as you can see, false value. Yeah. So if you make this true all the time, this value, uh, if you make this condition true all the time, this will be executed unless otherwise this will be. Okay, let's just close that. Now let's make use of this. If you remember, we have some code over here. I can just copy and uh, put it here. And then uh, let's just change all the he to pronoun. Actually, I can just change to pronoun. Yeah, so this, yeah, what is this here? Yeah, I think it's indentation. Okay, great. Now this will be smarter. Yeah, she's Elena Sami. She's from Finland. She is 21 years old. Yeah, does she have any skill? Let's check if she has skill or not. Uh, print s.get uh, skills and let's see. Why I'm get skills, nothing as you can see. Uh, so as you can see, it doesn't give anything. Now we can override the available this, we can override it over there, and but I think we can just make it a bit smarter. So get as you can see, when there is no skill, it doesn't give anything. So we can say uh or solve dot skills dot uh do you remember the len the lengths then len so i can say if len is greater than zero i have to return this yeah else i can use uh no skill no skill or no skills i can say this one value or result okay now as you can see and then i can return the result now let's see elena's skill again Oh, no skills. At least now it tells something. So now let's start adding the skill to Elena. S dot add skill. I think she know uh, Python, and I think she knows uh, Git and GitHub and other things. Now let's run this here, and she may have now some skills. Oh, Python, Git, and GitHub, and or oh, maybe I can also add another more uh, courses in her skill list, and maybe React or data analysis. And now let's see. Great, yeah. Have you seen now it's getting smarter even now instead of uh, by gender actually we can actually add here the skills yeah so remember we have this result let's do here i want to make use of this uh, information over here and i want this to be robust okay i can say as you can see we can access uh self.skills uh what is this yeah or maybe we can say in, in this case nothing no result so i can say the pronoun pronoun 
uh, has the following skills. And then I can inject the result. And now let's see. Uh, okay, she, yeah, uh, she has the following skills. Yeah, but as you can see, when the person doesn't have skill, it shouldn't show this part. Or just, we can just don't have to show this part of the code and we have to make it a bit better. Yeah, so how can we do that? Maybe if I put this code, by the way, if I put this part of the code before we print the information, it would be a bit different. Uh, I think I didn't. Uh, yeah, she's Elena, she's from Finland. She uh, yeah, is 21 years old. She has the following skills, Python, Git and GitHub, React and Data Analysis. I think it's better to have also a full stop and it will help us to know yeah, as you can see. But the thing is, how about if this were there and if someone doesn't have, actually we can make in the state late support what I want to do, what I want to do actually this statement, I can say out and skills, we have that result, nothing. Uh, then statement, and then I can say uh, result, and then I may say this operator, and maybe I think I can go like that. Uh, but I can actually use f string again here. Why not? What I'm doing actually, if you see here, we are returning empty. If it's empty, if it's empty, it doesn't go to the second line. But if it has something, it goes to this, this, I mean, this part of the expression. Now I can inject again the statement. <laughs> yes, uh, it's a bit complicated code, maybe statement. And now I may say, I may see nothing when, uh, what? Uh, but I have to take the code a bit up. Uh, I have to take this, I mean, the gate person info up. And then let's imagine we are not getting any information. She's Elena, she's from Finland and she's 21 years old. Yeah, it's working guys. And uh, yeah, when there's no information, yeah, it doesn't show, but after adding, after adding some skills, when we ask this function, the git person info function, it's just telling us everything about that person. So yeah, so as you can see, uh, we can create also new classes inside the uh, student, I mean, the child class. Yeah, there's no much difference, guys. So you can use all the, the methods and the properties here, but if you want um, here, for instance, imagine hobbies. We don't have this, I mean, the parent doesn't have hobbies property, but now uh, this might be having just a hobbies. And then let's say self and then hobbies and uh, and uh, of course, it's going to be empathy class and scores. Yeah, imagine at the first time when you just join this uh, Python uh, class, your score is also used to be zero score or points. Uh, uh, let's imagine zero, as you can see. Now let's add additional classes here. For instance, uh, Dave at uh, Hobie. Hobby, and then it should be self, and then a hobby, and there you can say return, 
Uh, we don't return because it's adding. So we can say self and then hobbies and dot append. And maybe we can add, add the hobby from coming here. But this doesn't look like self, okay? Let's make it self. Does this should be self all the time? No, we can call it any name, this one, but I would recommend you just to use self, okay? Not to, not to uh, work against the convention. Why use four greater than two? Someone asked me because four is greater than two because it's all the time true, okay? Just to make that condition true. I should have also said just true, okay? I can also say, uh, one is less than two, but I was just looking for uh, a, a statement that can be true. Yeah, is that clear? Someone asked Sunny. Okay, great. Let's, uh, yeah, and now maybe if we are interested to uh, get hobbies and hobbies and then solve, we don't need any. You just return the solve and then the hobbies. Right, this is what we need. Yeah, then uh, it's the same thing. How about point? And then you may tell me how can I add points? Imagine I want to, uh, whenever you answer one question, I will give you five points. Maybe you can say def uh, add point or points and yeah, maybe I can say and solve every now and then if I have a plan to just give fixed I can say a point if I have a plan to just make it five every time I can just uh, put a default five and then I can say this uh, sorry I'm just confused with other programming language Note this itself dot uh, points is equal to then the point, the new point. And now let's see Elena's point. Print uh, s dot gate. Uh, but I think we didn't have gate point yet. So let's have the gate point. Uh, that's gate points. Solve, we just return the value reader, uh, solve dot the points. This is good enough. And then if I say self dot uh, get points, and then if I just invoke like this, and now it's zero, but let's add first a point somewhere here. Uh, maybe add a point. If I call the add point just by itself, it's adding five. Yeah, we agree that. Yeah, as you can see, but I can also pass for instance. Now I'm so generous and let me just make 100 points just all of a sudden. And of course, you sh should have. Yeah, and if I should have given her a bit before, just without. And now if I do this, how do you think the point of Elena now? What do you think the, po the point of Elena? If you are following me, you know the total number of points she has. Let's make this maybe 95. Here she got five and here she got 95 in total, 100, uh, great, guys, why? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, then, yes, because mm, I think mm, I should modify my code.
Okay, I think it should be somehow different. The way I should write it should be, yes, it should be like this. Solve dot points plus point. Does it make sense? Yeah, what do you think? Okay, let's try this. Oh yeah, 100 now. Yes, great. I think this is everything what you need about uh, object-oriented. And of course, there is this static method, method that you can access. For instance, it could be inside here or wherever. There is like, for instance, let's just apply static method. I can say you have to have this uh, a symbol, static method. And then after that, after you write this, you can say def, and you can call it a uh, static method. St uh, whatever name, I will be called from class. Now, what does that mean? I'm just giving it a fancy name just to show you. Uh, then I can say return. I am available from the class. So you don't have to create an object to get this value. So I can say anywhere, if I say uh, print and then person, and then what was the name? I will be available. Yeah, so if I just call this function, I will get it. So without creating an object, we can access the static method like this. I will, I'm available from the class. Have you seen it? Yes. So if you want to be available from the class without being instantiated or uh, be, before you create, you can also create such kind of static mated. I can call it static mated. Static mated. Mm. Yes. You can just call it. I think it's not a reserved word. I just add underscore. And now I have to change it here. Let's try. Yes, great. I think this is uh, what uh, I have for today uh, when it comes to classes and objectives. Also, let's just recap. Okay, maybe we can create a class called animal. Okay, animal. And this is how you create. We call this declaration or creating a class. Yeah, so we, you just create it and it doesn't have anything. It just has only name, but this doesn't do much. So we have to have the constructor with this in it. Yeah. And this allow us this the self. And then again, as you can see, uh, I created or I just used the default constructor function, but this allow us to pass different properties as we have seen name of the animal, age, uh, maybe just number of legs or number of uh, whatever limbs and yeah. And then these are properties or attributes or fields. And to attach this to the class, we use the self, don't name, and then to itself. So we are actually binding that property to, to the an animal class. And then self, oh, I don't have to go far, self, and then age. And then again, I can uh, 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 bind all the properties. Yeah, well, let's just finish all of them and actually age on oh, no, legs. Oh, I don't know what. Mm, and then to legs. And what is this actually? Uh, let's just stop from here. 
this is good enough already, for example. And then we can have different methods, yeah, methods of the class. And then you can just do, of course, we have to have self here also. And then we can do uh, some operation inside here. Yeah. And then after that, let me just call it pass. I don't want to write anything. How do we instantiate? And then the animal class, and uh, just you can call it animal. And then in this case, the name is going to be whatever, maybe if it's a dog, or maybe you can create a dog. Uh, the name, yeah, animal, yeah, maybe it's dog, and then animal, and the name is fluffy. And I think it's one more F. And the age is going to be uh, eight, and the leg is going to be four. And then you can create a cat also here, and this is going to be cat. And then you can Muri, and maybe you can call her four. And then uh, the legs are also four, some kind. So we call this instantiation or creating an object from the class. And then we have the method. And again, if we want to actually create a different uh, child, we can create inheritance, yeah? And that's what we have seen actually here. The student is actually a child of the person, yeah. So this is good enough. And uh, let me stop here for the class and uh, object part.